Now, maybe you've watched an archaeology show like Time Team and seen as they have dug down into the soil, sometimes up to a couple of feet, and unearthed Roman ruins in Britain from 2,000 years ago. I don't know if you've ever wondered where that foot or two of soil came from. The answer, of course, is that soil is alive and it does grow. Today, what I wanted to talk about is how that process works in a very simple way and also to look at how we can actually utilize it in our gardens, both veggie garden, orchard, flower garden, to actually help our soil to grow, to grow topsoil. Now here at my feet is a very small example of the process. This is a paver, a concrete paver, and you'll see how the grass is growing over it. It is the growth and decay of vegetation, the addition of the organic matter that grows good soil. Now it's interesting to lift a piece of sod and actually have a look at the process and see what's happening in the soil. In this, we've got the vegetation that grows on top and as it decays, it's probably hard for the camera to see because I haven't got the ability to come in that close, but you'll see the decaying vegetation on the top and that is being turned by the microorganisms, by the worms, wood lice, all these type of things are turning it back into organic matter in the soil. But also below the ground, we have the roots and they don't live forever. They decay as well, particularly like around here, we've got some deep rooted plants like the cat's ear and they go right down and as they die off, the whole root system as well is turning into back into soil. So this process of growth, decay, is something that goes on in the small scale here like this sod, also in the larger scale of the forest, and happens right across the planet. The only two places it really doesn't happen is in the desert, where there is no water available, or in the ice, where the ice is completely covering it and is unable to grow. Let's go and have a look in the forest where it's easier to see on a more macro scale, a much larger scale as to what's happening. Here in the forest, there is a massive amount of vegetation. And a lot of it, of course, is standing upright as this tree, this giant of the forest. Now, not only does it contribute a huge amount of vegetable matter, mostly carbon, to the soil in the form of the leaf litter that falls, but of course, when it dies, it's going to contribute the whole bulk of the tree. When man intervenes, we often take these, we use them as timber, we burn them, and it is lost to the soil. But under natural processes, it works differently. I want to take you to another spot and show you what happens. Now, I'm hoping you can see on the camera here how there's a section through here that has no trees growing in it. When I first saw it, the first thing that occurred to me is that maybe somebody had tried to put a road through here in the past. But then I looked beneath my feet. Here at my feet was the evidence of what had caused this clearing. This is the remnant of a tree. You can see how the moss has grown on it. But if we open it up, you can see this is all timber that is decomposing, that the soil microbes and larger forms of life too, as I mentioned earlier, things like the wood lice, etc., are all breaking this down and turning it back into soil. And as you walk over it, you can notice how spongy this area is. So here's a piece of another forest giant that is decomposing. And of course, this one still has quite a way to go to get into the soil. But this is the process that occurs in nature. So let's go back to the veggie garden and see how we can actually utilize it to grow soil in our gardens. 
One of the first ways of using that massive amount of organic matter that comes from the forest that probably comes to mind is using products like these, like we've got wood chip here, we've got pine bark. The only thing with these is that they are basically all carbon and that means that they're not going to break down very quickly. So while they're really great as mulches on top of the soil to actually keep moisture in, to keep weeds suppressed, they're not really good at building soil quickly. They will over time as we saw how the logs as big as they are to begin with do break down eventually into soil but that process takes decades if not centuries. You don't want it that slow in your garden, you want something faster. Another forest product is an all-in wood chip like this. Now this has the advantage that because it actually has the whole tree, leaves included in it, along with the timber, it has had nitrogen plus the carbon together. That means it actually decomposes a lot faster. Now this pile has been here for about six months and you can see inside it that it is beginning to compost quite well. I use this in a variety of locations. This year I've used it on my garlic and I have to say it's probably the best mulch I've ever used on my garlic in terms of maintaining weed suppression. But it's still going to be fairly slow. Even though it is faster than the wood chip without the leaf and it's much faster than the pine barks, it still needs to be used as a mulch on top of the soil. It's certainly not something that you want to actually incorporate into the soil because it still has a lot of carbon and it's going to pull a lot of nitrogen out of your soil if you do that. A much faster way, of course, is to use a product like this, which is a commercial compost that is using lots and lots of timber, but has had a lot of other organic matter that has high in nitrogen added to it to enable it to compost. Now, it will break down very quickly and it has microorganisms in it already so it's going to become soil fast and make plants grow really well. It's the number one choice to use in the veggie garden, the flower garden where you want some rapid results but it's got one downside and that's that creating something like this requires considerable mechanization. It requires machinery that is often beyond us, it certainly as veggie gardeners even as homesteaders it's often beyond what we can do. So there are simpler ways that require less effort. My favourite method to actually grow soil in my veggie garden is to use a green manure crop. To find spaces between the actual productive crops that you're growing to actually put in a mix of seeds that's going to create vegetation and also roots below that you're going to not remove from the soil but actually incorporate into the soil in one way or another. Now here I've got one that's getting a little bit on the long side. It was ideal about a week ago and I would have probably rotary hoed it in back then except that it rained and now the soil is too damp for me to do that at this point. One of the reasons I really like green manure is that unlike the forest products which have to be imported, take a lot of transport, they take heavy machinery in actually creating them as I said earlier, this product can be actually grown on site. So you're literally, as I said, growing your soil. What have I been growing in here? This is one that's for springtime. I've got some oats in it. I have some mustard. This is really good to reduce disease in the soil, particularly to prevent nematode. And because I've had potatoes growing in here, I like to actually follow that with mustard. I also have broad beans, which is a legume, which is going to help add more nitrogen. But basically all this green material is going to be nitrogen into the soil. We must not forget though, the roots that are underneath, which are also going to add more nutrient as well because they're going to break down in the soil once this is killed by either rotary hoeing it in or digging it in which is the most common traditional way of dealing with a crop like this 
or as you've seen in the past, I sometimes simply side this off and mulch over it. And that will work just as well if you've got the mulch material available to do it. Because it's in that top six inches of soil, as we saw in that piece of sod, where the microorganisms are most active. If you ever put a post into the ground, you'll find that at that section, those top six inches, uh, a wooden post will rot off. It won't rot so much below, deeper in the ground, nor will it rot above. It's that surface where there is the active life. And it's that active life that turns this vegetation into good soil. Now, in an orchard, there's another way of doing this. A long held tradition in orchards has been to actually cultivate around trees because it was felt that the growth of grass and vegetation competed with the roots for nutrition. And in a way that is true, but cultivation also destroys the roots that are near the surface because the feeder roots for a lot of these trees is very close in that top six inches of the soil and cultivation is going to damage them. So my preference is to allow vegetation to grow and then simply to take it back into the soil. Now I use a lawnmower, there are other ways of doing that. You can use animals or birds like geese are really good in an orchard where they will graze and of course do their droppings which is going to go into the soil and be incorporated again. But I do like just taking this straight uh, vegetable matter and laying it down. As I said, I use a lawnmower. I find that uh, satisfying in terms of a visual impact and also very quick in turning this back to the soil and getting it in the way that I'm getting nitrogen in. The other option is to actually let it grow longer and use a scythe where you're cutting it down and laying it down around the tree to decompose. Because a lot of that will dry by the sun, you're going to get some carbonizing rather than nitrogen, but there'll be a mix because there'll be some that's green underneath. So it's whichever way you choose to do it. Personally, look, lawns have got a bad reputation in certain areas because they've been seen as a monoculture. For some people, my lawn would be a disgrace. They'd say it was just full of weeds. But well, what they see as weeds, I see as some genetic diversity in the growth. And I see it as an opportunity to get a lot more variety of nutrients back into my soil. And, and so around a tree like this, I'm really happy to see things like clovers growing. I'm happy to see the cat's ear growing. The product that you actually get from this type of vegetation, grass and mixed weeds being mowed is fantastic. One, as I said earlier with the green manure, it is being produced on site. It is produced very easily without any effort really of yours at all. The other is that you can use the lawnmower to incorporate it back directly into the soil. So mulching it as I do under these fruit trees or you can use a catcher and collect those clippings. Now, you can utilize those in so many ways. You can put them into a compost heap as extra nitrogen, or you can use them directly around shrubs and trees as an immediate mulch. And this is in many cases the way I use it because I get the grass and weed suppression, plus I get to actually feed the plant and to enrich that soil that's around it. Very quickly, they'll begin to break down. Some of the surface will carbonize, but underneath the nitrogen begins the decomposition very quickly. Sometimes it can be a little bit slimy, but look, it depends on the amount of rain. It doesn't really matter. It's important that it's laying over and killing the grass underneath it. One really important thing around this is to keep the back from the stem of the tree though, because if it's too close around here, it can cause some damage to the bark and can potentially kill your tree. Of course, if you have leaf fall as well as grass mixed together, it's even better. 
and it's going to compost really nicely. So here's an area that I had thick grass clippings laid down late in the autumn and so it's been sitting three or four months over winter and now there's basically nothing here there's very little that hasn't broken down and the soil life has consumed it all it's fed the soil the plants growing really well and loving it so here's something that is often thought of as a waste that needs to be disposed of has been of great advantage in terms of giving me grass and weed control and feeding the plant. So next time that you need to mow the lawn, don't think of it as a chore, as something you'd rather avoid. Think of it as harvesting a resource that you can actually use to improve your crops, to improve the soil, to improve your fruit trees, and yes, to actually assist that soil that's under your feet to grow.